So the temperature is up, the humidity is up. Uh, I wanted to do this on Wednesday night, couldn't do it. Thursday night, couldn't do it either. So I wanna do it now on a Friday morning before the humidity goes really up. This is Superman, War World Apocalypse number one, the conclusion. So what we're getting here is we're now seeing Midnighter, we're seeing Apollo, we're seeing Omac, and Lyda, Lita, Light Ray, I think her name is. Uh, Light Ray is the speedster's name. I was going to get that name right. I was going to know it one time, and that was it. And we got Manchester Black. We've got everyone. We've got Steel. So here we have this final battle. Uh, I recently saw Kennedy Johnson's uh, interview. Uh, I understand what he's trying to do, but I have some criticisms of this finale. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But you see uh, Light Ray is uh, a zombie under uh, Mongol's rule. You see Omak. You see uh, Apollo. Now, Apollo is the future husband of Midnighter, who looks like Batman. Uh, you've got June Moon here in the middle, and then you've got uh, Manchester and Midnighter. Uh, Steel is somewhere trying to turn the red stars, forge the red suns that power the war world into yellow suns. That's important. So while all this fighting is going on, uh, Superman confronts Krillix and Mongol. Krillix uh, has betrayed Superman for Mongol for his loyalty. And what ends up happening here is that this is... Uh, Krillix wants Superman to give up the magic sword, the, the one of the fire of Olgren, the one that has the great power. And the kids, the, the children, the lambs, tell him don't do it. But Superman will not give up this this powerful sword or this powerful dagger if it means uh, uh, he will not give it up if it meant saving lives. But he had to give it up to save lives because, you know, Mongol's a bastard. So he stabs one of them and that was it. So this is a horrible thing. So one of the kids is dead. And Superman's pissed. Yeah, of course he would be. Um, Mongol doesn't care. Mongol wants to build... Well, I think the thing that Kennedy Johnson does very well is that he builds up the moralities of both. You saw it in the annual, in which uh, Superman, or young Clark Kent, uh, faced his bully without throwing a punch. He, his bully eventually became, or as a Caleb, became a, a youth center uh, uh, leader, you know, a mentor for kids, uh, because he was once a bully who didn't understand he had problems too. He had cancer. And so, but Mongol's mother forced him to, to tough it out. You know, don't be weak or stupid. So these two, Mongol and Superman, had very, two very different set of moralities. That's what Kennedy Johnson's take. And I think that's good. I think, you know, it's like I was saying before for the Injustice comic, that if Hawkman wanted the kryptonite ring from Mongol to stop Superman, what would it have cost him? I think it would cost him more than a 30-second fight. It would cost him his people. So as they're fighting, we get to Steel. We get to Natasha. Darling and... Uh, I forget who it is. Uh, so you have Darling. Uh, one of them is the robot, giant spider. And one of them is the baby that has sentience. Uh, it's very sad. I think uh, Ken uh, Kennedy was talking about this. So as everybody knows, it's... The origin of, of Darling, the was it the baby and the giant robot that was once the family pet? Um, there used to be there used to be this this caring, loving family from another dimension, much like Krypton was another place. And instead of uh, being together, something goes wrong, and so this uh, manifestation is in place. But they're on Superman's side, and so she has she has her mission. She has to go and figure out. Uh, how to turn those red stars into yellow stars to power not only Superman, but the Philosians. Uh, so the teacher is one of the unmade, one of the guards. You have to remember, it's Teacher Omak, a dead light ray come to life, uh, other warriors against Superman's team. Uh, definitely Natasha is still on Superman's team, but uh, so you got the baby who has the sentience, you got Darling who's a machine, was once the family pet, but has turned into a, a mutation of sorts, if you could call it that. Uh, they got a they got a mission to do. 
and it appears that teacher is dead. Uh, Kennedy Johnson also said that one character he planned to keep alive is dead and one that he had wanted to keep dead is alive. So that might have been Light Ray uh, that he wanted dead and is now alive. Uh, so now they got their work cut out for them. They got to turn the sun into a yellow sun, red from, red from red to yellow. We do have this fight going on. And Light Ray, or not Light Ray, uh, Apollo is going to kill... Uh, Midnighter and everyone else. But as Manchester Black has explained, that teacher put all these implants, kind of like Desaad, where he has these torture devices for Dark Side. And if he if they don't get him out of him, that they'll fucking die. So uh, this is just they not only have to they have to fight each other, which is which is difficult because this is not what Superman wanted. Superman wanted to just end Mongols' rule. But Mongol was one step ahead of Superman. You know, this wasn't just War World with uh, those guys in purple armor and green faces like you would see in the Death and Return of Superman. This was like uh, on a level that they took these people from their homes and enslaved them. And Superman was asked to rescue people. The Logians, his, the Kryptonians, they were still Kryptonians and they still have to rescue them. So Superman had a lot of work cut out for him. And there's a fight going on. The fight keeps going. And Viola Esch called this the fire from which all war world grow, grew. It's not just strength, it's life. It belongs to the best and bravest of us. That's neither you or me. Uh, he, he takes it back to the boy. But what happens is the boy will come back to life because that's what Superman wanted most. The power of life versus just having power. Uh He's breathing. This was important. Um, so Superman challenges Mongol to fight again. And some people probably thought Superman would kill Mongol, but that's not Superman's way. But, you know, I always just kept thinking that the two children here would be the ones to kill Mongol because they had never thought about doing that. They thought about serving him, but not killing him. So it's a lot. But I think they're going through enough as it is, having having the, the brother, her brother, getting stabbed and then... He has to undo the whole thing. Uh, this is the morality of Superman is played very well here. I think it's very even. Uh, it's mostly consistent with what Grant Morrison started out here. Uh, I know there was some story before all this, before the Authority, but I'm kind of following the Authority and then onward to to this arc, and about that's about it. This is a tough nut to crack, but uh, uh, Apollo still attacking. Now, here's what's happening here. So they have to get those uh, those implants away from Apollo. So here comes the Justice League. Uh, they make a last-minute appearance. Uh, I knew that he's as strong as a demon. So, yeah, Midnighter understands what's happening. But uh, Flash, so everybody's working together. You got the Flash, you got Cyborg, Wonder Woman's there. And they were to have... Apollo take his own implants out. He takes his own implants out, which means the illusion worked, which means that the Justice League were not there. They, they were just there in in essence, but not in re reality. So uh, it's good that the two, the, hey, the two lovers are back. That's fine. And like the Justice League, yeah, I thought they're going to make a Justice League cartoon. I don't know if that's going to work. I think it works better when you have criminals and dark heroes work with Superman. So Superman learns to trust them. And there's a whole mission here, but like, yeah, it's good. So Apollo's back. Uh, we'll see, we'll soon see, we'll soon see the return of another character. There's a nice scene. Basically, and Natasha says goodbye to Leonath. Leonath is, of course, the forger of steel and other metal. So these two become good friends. Uh, there's a bonding here. He goes off to another place, and uh, that's said we see that. But most importantly, the sun is restored to a bluish white color, so it's no longer red because that's Superman's weakness is red sun. Uh, and we have more fighting, more fighting. Who's gonna win through all this? Superman gets his powers back because uh, he's not that stupid. Oh, uh, now I think, hold on, are we in focus? We are not in focus. Now I have major mistake my own. Mongol who was, was right to, and that's, 
that's all he's got to say because that's the first death I'm owed. Now that you squandered the fire of Olgren, but it seems I have a right to find a, I have found a fire of my own. Krillis kills Mongol, which, I don't know, I guess it could have been anybody, but I knew it wasn't going to be Superman. There was no way Superman himself was going to kill Mongol. Uh, somebody else would do it. So it was Krillix because he did this traitorous stuff at the last minute. But Krillix had not done a whole lot other than arena battles and some philosophical quotes. He didn't do a whole lot, but he was just like that that team member. So in the end, Krillix kills Mongol. I'm sure if you had to rewrite this, somebody else would do it. Um you know, maybe the children, I think the children would have, you know, because I, I think it should have been the brother, honestly, because since the since Mongol killed the brother, the brother should kill Mongol. That would have been an, an eye for an eye, literally, but maybe biblical talk here. So the war zooms, the Philosians get their powers back. Omak attempts to save Lita or uh, Light Ray. I wish we had never come here, but we did. And I can't let Mongol undo what you came here to do. I won't. So this is another love story. And through magic or whatever it is, uh, Light Ray comes back, but at the sacrifice of Omak. Uh, can you hear me? Is it really you? It's me. It's me, Mac. I'm here. I feel different, though. I don't. I know things I didn't know before. I'm so sorry. I did my best, but I didn't know how to. Just rest. You've done enough for me. And uh, I'm going to make you better now. Like, I don't know. Maybe still dead, still alive. Oh, okay. So she might be alive. So there's the black racer and the black racer races off. So you barely see the black racer come about. So it turns out Omak may still be alive. Well, they're not going to like Superman very much after this, are they? So it's probably just for misdirection to show you. Oh, yeah, that uh, Krillix was still on Superman's side. So there's a whole lot of spiel about... Uh, uh, how could you understand what I've been driven to do to kill Mongol? I needed the fire of Olgren. But, uh, yeah, but Superman's not, Superman was not interested in killing Mongol. He was interested in freeing the slaves. He was interested in freeing, uh, destroying War World and keeping it out of Mongol's hands. He probably would have put him in the Phantom Zone. He probably would have put him anywhere but death. But Krillix is not Superman, so it made sense for him to do it. It made sense for anybody else to do it, to be honest. Uh, whether it was Manchester Black, whether it was any of the authority, whether it was the children or the innocents of War World, the war, innocent war zones, it didn't matter. So he's going off. He's, he's, he's just fucking off like that's it. And so we have a celebration, like, much like Return of the Jedi. Everybody wins. Uh, there's encouragement. Uh, there's, there's willing to go on. Everybody's celebrating. So it's it's a very good this I mean this is you know John Carter of Mars. This is He Man beating up Hordak. So a few loose ends. We do go back to the uh, United Planets where they were fore foretold from the beginning that uh Superman would go and liberate War World. And this is Krillik. So they were responsible, however, responsible for the deaths of his children. He lost his whole family because of them. So he's, he's like, uh, nice place you got here. It would be a shame if something were to happen to it. So this is sort of that portion of the book. Um, it's pretty good. Let me, you know, like I said, there's a lot of, it's a, it's part Star Wars, part John Carter of Mars, part Flash Gordon, part He-Man. And that's, that's the level Superman needed to be at. So lastly, we get Lois's uh, narration here. Uh, just talking about Clark, her, she, her and Clark. And at the end, we do get this. There's a whole, there's a statue that's coming out, by the way, that shows Superman and Lois together. Uh, nice statue, I think. Um, but that is the, uh, that's the end of it, honestly. Uh, more Tim Sale uh, tributes. I will say that I was disappointed. Uh, I would give it a 7. I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. I'm disappointed that something was omitted, and that was the last time Superman and the Authority would see one another. So I would like to have seen a closing scene where, uh, I mean, it could be anything, but where they just talk to each other. I mean, do they talk about their experiences? Do they talk about what their plans are? Because this started with Superman getting that group together, getting June Moon, getting Light Ray, getting Omac, uh, Mac, right? Uh, getting uh, Manchester Black, 
uh, getting uh, Natasha, all these people together, Apollo Midnighter to to fight to go to another planet, and this was not beat up the Joker and that's it. This was this was not a Suicide Squad type thing that they were doing. This was go to another planet and actually free the slaves. This was like his own Suicide Squad, and I thought that that was really important to to have that last scene together with them. And that did not happen. Uh, we don't see what happens to these characters uh, in some sort of a, like a montage epilogue. We don't get that. We just kind of get that he gets home to Lois. Now, they could uh, Kennedy could backpedal and show a bit more of that in, in future issues of Action Comics. But honestly, I wanted that in here. I didn't want that. I don't want to go and collect. This is this will be my my the last of my comic book collecting for a long time. It's not that I hate comics. It's just that I have so many. And I've heard Marvel and DC are in trouble financially and uh, whether they're getting different kinds of writers, whether they're woke writers or they're not very good writers or inexperienced, whatever it is, uh, the stories aren't where they could be. But I feel like Kennedy Johnson, for the most part, he did an average to above average. And sometimes he really put out some good. Like, so for, for me, it's like, you know, like, you know, a 7 out of 10 to at times a 9 out of 10, you know, based on what he was writing. I felt like he really, really set up this whole fantasy world. But honestly, it's, it's taking place in outer space on a distant planet, on a forged planet. So, yeah, I mean, I, overall, I did enjoy the story from beginning to end. But I wish, I really wish that there was time that Superman spent with the authority to to recover, to talk about their experiences. Uh, you know, maybe even if it, even if the scene ended, like, I don't think we'll be doing this for a while, but when I need your help, we'll do this again. But I just wanted to see that interaction because yes, it was important for him to, I think the Philogians have a future story about uh, later on how Superman would deal with the Philogians. Uh, but I just wanted to see a a a scene with that how we how you know what are you gonna do about the philosian superman what are you gonna do about this or that i wanted to see one last scene with the authority and see where the authority goes from there and then they go to their homes and then superman goes back to lois the the ending was right but it was also wrong if that makes sense seven out of ten uh and we'll i'll cover some he-man stories later 